Alright guys, we've just departed uh, Bundaberg, Queensland, so we're heading back outside the reef and uh, do another trip. So yeah, see how it goes. So a uh, big thank you to uh, Belinda and the team at Ocean Pacific Seafoods. Um, big help the unload year, really stoked things, went really smoothly. And also the guys at uh, Bundaberg Marina, um, big help, yeah, so um, appreciate it. Yeah, so we'll wander out, uh, moon's on the rise. And uh, what was it last week? It was about 28.4 degrees Celsius, the uh, sea surface temp. So uh, we'll, should, we should see an improve in the fishing with the, the, the moon on, on the rise up to a full moon phase. So, yeah. So, no, looking forward to getting out there again. Yeah, so, all right, guys. Um, stay safe and uh, we'll be in touch during the trip, eh? Cheers, guys. Sunrise in the Coral Sea. So we just departed... Uh, Bundaberg, Queensland, just inside the Great Barrier Reef there. Departed there a couple of days ago, so we're about to shoot a line away. I'll get the boys up shortly and uh, we'll get some gear in the water. So the forecast is sort of 20, or you know, 15 to 20 knots. So uh, for the rest of the week, by the looks of it, so I'll be quite happy if it stays like that. We've still got a, a, a few days to go before the the first quarter of the of the moon phase, so we're a little bit early. But uh, we'll get some gear in the water anyway and uh, see what happens. Reports are it's been pretty quiet. Just talked to a boat yesterday and uh, he had a very quiet day. So we'll get on to time zero and uh, do the latest download on the uh, Ocean East, the Ocean O uh, premium subscription service. So I've just done a done a download on, on both systems. So we'll have a quick look at that, and uh, well, I've got I've got to set sort it out and uh, see how we go. All right, time to wake the boys up. Getting a shot in the water now. And a beautiful day for it. Stunning weather. And the forecast is supposed to be oh, 20 knots, sort of average of 20 knots. But uh, we'll take this all day. Got our blue ocean gear beacons, the yellow, the yellow GPS beacon there. Gives us our, uh, our beacon position, sea surface temperature, uh, direction of drift, speed of drift. Uh, if the gear starts to sink, it gives the alarm out on the uh, on my uh, phone. So yeah, brilliant, brilliant piece of kit. And up here we don't have to uh, deploy a toy line, so because we're above 25 degrees south, we, um, there's essentially no birds, no birds that would dive on the baits anyway. We get the goody birds, but yeah, nothing that dives on baits, so uh, we don't have to deploy any uh, toy lines. Yes, it's just a, a standard surface set. Hooks are 10 seconds apart. Squid for bait. The boys have got their hunting and fishing uh, straw hats on. Keep the sun off. Better with just that steady uh, 
that steady beep now instead of how we had it last time. Yeah. Heaps better, eh? Get in a rhythm. Well there. The chair, can't complain. All the air conditioning's on. Speaking number three, so yeah, we're not even halfway yet. So, uh, another two or three hours to go yet. Well, we're just about to uh, deploy one of our uh, Blue Ocean GPS beacons, the yellow beacon you'll see there. And we're still using the old traditional radio uh, direction finding beacons, the DF beacons. Uh, but essentially they're just cow light holders. So I'll find a smaller uh, boy, boy just to hold the lights and we'll get rid of the DF beacons, which will clear up a lot of room. So yeah, the new technology with the blue ocean gear is just, just phenomenal. Tractor gear. I mean, last night, uh, the guys didn't have one of the lights on and uh, I just steamed straight up to the beacon anyway with the, uh, the GPS beacon, it's that, it's that accurate. So I steamed straight up. Gave the crew a bit of a tune up as you can imagine for not having the light on but uh, at the end of the day it wasn't a problem finding the gear. You know, extremely accurate. be a well drilled right. so I've got those uh, every 350 hooks so about every six miles I should have them closer together but uh, I've only got the six beacons so, yeah so And that'll come up on my screen and I know where the gears I could what's that beacon number three I see, I see our gears already drifted to the southeast at about one knot so handy to have
spike it through the brain, kill it instantly, and then bleed it. So he's just putting the clawing wire down its spine, kills all the nerves, and relaxes the flesh. And, uh, stops that antibiotic build up. There's a bit of colour down there. Right in the guts. Jesus. Well, Crookie Cutter's been in having a chew. So spike it through the brain. Look at that, beautiful. Beautiful Leighton, instant death. Well done mate. So he's just putting the clawing wire in it now. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't quite dead. He's just threading that right down the spinal column now, and you can see it hitting all the nerves all the way down. Well done, mate. That's it, just make sure you nick that vein, eh? That's the one. Yeah, the vein sits right under that recess, right under that rebate. Yep, just slice up there, that's it. Yeah. You'll, you'll actually feel it, yeah, you feel that, uh, feel, feel the knife hit that, gris, that grisly bit, eh? Yeah. Yeah, mate. There you go. So the next thing he does is he puts a hole in the gut cavity. Once he's done the bleed cuts, we get a hole in the gut cavity. And we get the hose into the gut cavity. And uh, essentially pressurise it. We're trying to flush all that blood. You can see the blood coming out of the bleed cuts. So uh, he'll keep doing that until uh, all, the, basically until the blood uh, until that runs clear. There you go. Nicely done, mate. There you go. Nice. So uh, you can see it slowly starting to clear up. And he'll keep flushing that fish until the uh, the water runs clear. And the idea is you're trying to get that warm blood out. So the fish is not cooking itself. You want to flush all that, uh, all that acid and all that bloody heat out of the fish as quick as you can. Nicely done, Layden. Awesome, bro. So the boys have come from other fisheries. Layden was doing the uh, spanner crabs at Malula Bar, and uh, he's picked it up really quick. He's doing a fantastic job. What's that mate? Bit of a dog, this road. Oh, a bit of road? Alrighty. Something to put on the cob grill to smoke. Yeah, that fish is in good condition. A lot of fat content by the looks of it.
it's a bit slubby out there, but I tell you what, that breeze is nice. Very welcome. So there's your heart. Still beating. And the old shits and giggles as you get the greenhorn to eat the beating heart. Pretty standard on turner boats. So you later will just uh, scrape out all the blood and guts out of the uh, gill plates and into the gut cavity and give it a good scrub and a hose out. And then it goes uh, straight into the uh, brine tank and uh, get that core temperature down as quick as we can. One more flush. Nice. And it looks to me like we might have another one. That's an oil fish. with the oil fish because you don't need a lot of them <laughs> we don't keep them we just discard them and record recorded and discarded into the ice, get that core temperature down as quick as we can. Well done bro. Get quicker. Nice work mate, nice and quick, nice and quick. And there's that god awful noise when these bloody hatches close. Second half of the line's definitely fished a bit better. A bit more of a tropical fruit salad. Got the uh, mahi mahi and bits and pieces. So he's just done this bit.
we're back in Coffs Harbour uh, to do an unload. Beautiful day. Had the odd prawn trawler coming in, they come in most, most mornings. But uh, pretty quiet, really. Idea around the plastic bags is it stops the chafing, so uh, you can see how they're suspended in the tank of ice water. Um, when we're moving around, it stops the, uh, the belly meat uh, chafing. Tidy fish. 